Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is an introduction to the conceptual and statistical framework of our Bay Aspirations, Vision and Mission Programs and Ministries. It prepares church workers and councils to fulfill the disciplinary mandate to report every year. In particular, the 2016 UMC Book of Disciplines states in paragraph 606.7, The local church report to the annual conference shall be submitted on the prescribed forms no later than 30 days following the close of the calendar year. If the annual conference sets an earlier deadline for receiving the reports, the earlier deadline shall apply. The UMC congregations and districts that succeeded in meeting this deadline every year with 100 submission of reports. Before January 30, copies of their consolidated statistical forms are already in the bishop's office. The GCFA form is the standard reporting form for all UMC congregations worldwide. In addition, based on the Bay Aspirations, Vision and Mission conceptual framework as well as the Bay Programs and Ministries statistical framework, we have our contextualized Bay statistical form. Pastors and deaconesses, including lay leaders and lay ministers, if applicable, should begin its calendar year or conference year as the case may be, especially in new appointments, by reviewing the BEA statistical form and the GCFA form. Program planning should begin by determining contextual ministry needs that are reflected in these two forms. There are unique contextual ministry priorities in its UMC congregation, district, and annual conference. They may not be in these forms, but they are nevertheless part of implementation, documentation, and reporting in all levels. I would like to thank our lay leaders and district superintendents who engage in SWOT analysis and strategic planning for three weeks in January 2022. Based on their inputs, I wrote the Bea Aspirations, Bea Vision and Mission Programs and Ministries. They gathered again to finally consider, improve, and approve the whole document. With this, I am adding the last part that provides simple guideposts for UMC congregations in implementation, documentation, and reporting. Since the Bea statistical form begins to be implemented this year, 2022, this will serve as an important tool for all our UMC congregations, districts, and annual conferences. With membership and other data, we will use the instrument to compare with our 2020 and 2021 available data, especially on membership. Of course, since the United Methodist Church in the Philippines continues to be part of the global UMC connection, the traditional GCFA form will still be in use, especially on matters of membership statistics and financial stewardship. Like the Bea statistical form, the GCFA form that we have used for decades 
will be submitted to the church council, church conference, district statistician, and annual conference statistician. As I have always said, it is important to determine the most urgent and contextually applicable ministries to your local church situation. Do not attempt to do everything all at the same time. Endeavor to succeed and sustain three to five BEA programs and ministries every year and build on from there. In this way, I have a goal to preach the gospel where they haven't heard of Christ yet so that I won't be building on someone else foundation as stated in Romans 15.20 I am sure about this the one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Jesus Christ Philippians 1.6 My love is with all of you in Christ Jesus in 1 Corinthians 16 24 to God be the glory our Bea aspirations committed to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ praying and serving together in our community and called to obey the great commandment and the great commission. We shall mentor in discipleship, multiply in membership, magnify God in worship, mobilize in stewardship, mandate mission-focused leadership, model holiness through peace, justice, and equality. Because of the changing mission landscapes of the 21st century and the fourth industrial revolution, we aspire to become a church for our neighbors. In so doing, we become trained for transformation and equipped for empowerment. We become confident and courageous as we are sent in evangelistic mission. We prayerfully endeavor to become communities of faith that are vibrant and dynamic, creative and innovative, relevant and responsive to the challenges of our time. We aspire to be resilient in the midst of disasters and calamities, including the COVID-19 pandemic. With the Holy Spirit of God anointing us for ministry, we offer ourselves to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we seek truth and justice in the world. We unite to engage in ministries of compassion and righteousness to serve the oppressed, discriminated, and marginalized. Grounded in our biblical faith and Methodist history, we shall give emphasis to the disciplined commitment of tithing, the enrichment of our liturgical tradition and sacramental heritage, systematic nurture of disciples and deployment of leaders, and contextual effectiveness in our social media ministries. In addition, we envision a united Methodist Church that is one, strengthened in vitality, hospitality, stability, sustainability, and excellence in holistic mission. Number two, led by passionate church workers and members who are committed to nurture, outreach, and witness. Number three, served by theologically and biblically rooted, technologically competent, and professionally equipped pastors, deaconesses, and lay people in their ministry fields of specialization. And number four, 
compassionate in disaster relief and rehabilitation management, consistent in environmental protection, and consecrated for social justice. We share God's blessings in church to, to be able to serve God's people in the world. Our church is envisioned to become God's family for all our neighbors. To God be the glory. Our Bea vision and mission. Our vision, church for our neighbors. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, it says, You must love your neighbors as you love yourself. To offer our sanctuary, the church for our neighbors, is to be able to say that our life is meant for others. This is because we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is building the church to be a community of faith. In this community, God lives through the Spirit. The church, our sanctuary of faith and ministry, is not meant to be our self-serving, self-centered, self-focused kingdom. It is God's family that we share with our neighbors. We must therefore invite them to come in to our church family. We begin with our family. We communicate this church for our neighbors to our family, then reaching out to others in the neighborhood. It is here that we need to have credibility and consistency, integrity and accountability. Julian Lennon was abandoned by John Lennon, his father, when he was five years old. When he was 35 years old, he was quoted as saying, I felt he was hypocrite. Dad could talk about peace and love out loud to the world, but he never showed it to the people who meant the most to him his wife and son. How can you talk about love and peace and have family, a family in bits and pieces? No communication, adultery, divorce. You can't do it if you're not honest with yourself. So this is our vision. The whole world is watching. Our mission we make disciples by honoring gospel witness and grace-filled mission, sharing in church and serving in the world. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, it says, For the human one did not come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people. First, our mission is to make disciples, and our highest goal is to glorify God. And we glorify God by our gospel witness and grace-filled mission. Second, we actualize our gospel witness and grace-filled mission by sharing in the church and serving in the world. The grace of God that we celebrate in the sanctuary of our church is unleashed into the world, shaking service into the world. And God has chosen His only begotten Son to do this in the supreme act of grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen to die for our sins on the cross because this is the ultimate price of the sins of the world. And because the Holy Spirit of God ministers to know this, we thank God for this is what God has done for us. The only one true God 
who revealed himself as Son, Father, and Holy Spirit, has chosen to save us for our sake. Because there is no way we can earn salvation for ourselves. When Pastor Tom Allen of Grace Church in Seattle watched the movie Saving Private Ryan, he recalled that in the final minutes of the movie, Private Ryan and the Army Rangers fought a tragic battle, which they won at the cost of almost all precious lives from their side. Tom Hanks, who played one of the main characters in the story, was dying, and Private Ryan leaned over to listen to his last words. Tom Hanks said, earn this. Kung naaalala niyo pa ang pelikulang ito, ito ay kwento ng mga Army Rangers na may misyon na ibalik si Private Ryan na buhay sa Amerika. Ganito ang sabi ni Pastor Tom Allen na isa ding dating Army Ranger. Private Ryan bent down and Tom Hanks said, Earn this. The reason that made me angry is that no ranger would ever say, Earn this. Why? Because the ranger's motto for the past 200 years is not earn this. The ranger's motto for the past 200 years has been sua sponte. I chose this. I volunteered for this. So when Private Ryan bent down, if, if Tom Hanks was really a ranger, he would have said sua Ponte. I chose this. This is free. You don't pay anything for this. I gave up my life for you. That's my job. And so when you look at the cross and see Jesus hanging there, what you do not hear is earn this. You never hear Jesus say earn this. He doesn't say I've given everything for you. Now you need to get it out. Up for me. What he says is, Sua Sponte, I volunteered this for you. You do not have to pay anything for this. The Lord Jesus volunteered to make all these words in our mission statement possible. He said, This is why my Father loves me. I gave up my life for the ship. No one takes it from me, but I gave it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my Father, and it is stated in John chapter 10, verse 17. The following scriptural reflections further explain the Bay strategic plan to make our beloved United Methodist Church as the church for our neighbors and therefore we make disciples by God, honoring gospel, witness and grace, field ministries, sharing in the church and serving in the world. We glorify God. Our greatest goal is to glorify God. And our greatest passion is to prioritize God. We witness to the gospel of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Our Lord Jesus Christ is focus of our love and commitment. The Lord Jesus Christ is the message of our life. We engage in mission filled with grace as is stated in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Our mission is empowered by the Spirit of God, as it has been written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, and the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Our mission is defined by our commitment 
community and call. We are committed to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Written in Acts 16, verse 31. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 26. And 2 Peter, verse 1 of chapter 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 6 to 23. And 1 John chapter 5, 11 and 12. We are members of the Christian community of faith, the United Fellowship of Believers, as it has been written in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42 down to 47. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. We are called to obey the Great Commission in our mission. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. We are called to obey the Great Commandments as is stated in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 down to 40 in our priorities. We are called to obey the Great Learning as is stated in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. The Great Fasting as it has been written in Isaiah 53, verse 6 to 8. And the great requirement, Micah 6, 8, in our pursuit of justice. Our Christian mission is defined by commitment, community, and call. Our Christian mission is focused on our commitment to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our commitment defines our relationship with God and people because of what we believe. Commitment, we are therefore committed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. There is no other name. Acts chapter 4, verses 8 to 12. There is no other way, truth and life. John chapter 14, verse 6. There is no other means except by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. The Lord Jesus Christ is the self-giving revelation of the only one true God. The Incarnation teaches that God became human without ceasing to be God. It's according to John chapter 1, 14 and 18. The Holy Spirit of God made the incarnation possible. That's Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The salvation of humanity is the purpose of the incarnation. It's found in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. John chapter 1, verse 12, 20, 30 to 31. The Lord Jesus Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. Because we believe we are reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. Because we are reconciled, we are ambassadors of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 20, because we are justified, we are sanctified in Christ and by the Spirit of God. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Our Christian mission must help us to form our community of faith. Our community is the fellowship of all believers. Our community explains that we truly belong. The scripture has many one another passages that describe our Christian lifestyle and spiritual relationship in the church, our community of faith. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. So you also must love each other in John chapter 13, verse 34. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best of showing honor to each other in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. So welcome each other in the same way that Christ also welcomed you for God's glory. In Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Carry its other's burdens, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to its other. In the same way, God forgive you in Christ. For this reason, confess your sins to its other and pray for its other so that you may be healed. The prayer 
of the righteous person is powerful in what it can achieve. Watch yourselves in the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as supervisors to shepherd God's church, which he obtained with the death of his own son. Our Christian mission must help us fulfill our calling. Our calling is the summary of our lifetime goals as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our calling explains what we should do to truly bless God's children and creation. In pursuit of this, justice, we are called to fulfill the great fasting, the great learning, and the great requirement, the great fasting. Isn't this the fast that I choose, releasing wicked restraints, untying ropes of a yoke, setting free the mistreated, and breaking every yoke? Isn't it sharing your bread with the hungry and bringing the homeless poor into your house, covering the naked when you see them, and not hiding from your own family? Then your light will break out like the dawn, and you will be healed quickly. Your own righteousness will walk before you, and the Lord's glory will be your guard. Learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. From the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, James chapter 1 verse 27 the great requirements he has told you human one what is good in what he what the lord requires from you to do justice embrace faithful love and walk humbly with your god from the book of micah chapter 6 verse 8 in relation to our mission we are called to fulfill the great commission and the Great Commission is therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. In relation to our priorities, we are called to fulfill the great commandment. The great commandment, he replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets depends on these two commandments. Our calling comes to us in relation to our sense of justice, our sense of mission, and our sense of obedience. Our commitment, community, and calling mandate us to love and serve the least, the lost, and the lonely. Our commitment, community, and calling mandate us to offer our best ministries to the vulnerable, violated, and victimized. In our commitment, community, and calling that upholds love and justice, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. inspires us with these words, Power without love is reckless and abusive, and love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love, implementing the demands of justice, and justice at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. Ephesians remind us that in our life, changing world, transforming mission of making disciples, holiness and justice go together. Since you really listened to him and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus, change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking of your mind of the Spirit and clothe yourself with a new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 to 24. 
And as we fulfill our commitment, community, and calling, let us become agents of peace. Again, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us, one day we must come to see that peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal. We must pursue peaceful ends through peaceful means. To actualize our commitment, community and calling, we offer ourselves to care for those we serve. God called us to serve all people, and as a community of disciples, our church must be within people's reach. Our vision and mission will be realized by our programs and ministries that we share in the church that empowers us to serve in the world. In a nutshell, we summarize and simplify our vision and mission through programs and ministries that should not be limited to the four walls of the church, but reach out to the people and communities beyond our church, family, and fellowship. We share God's blessing in the church. We share the blessing of fellowship and membership. We share the blessing of discipleship. We share the blessing of stewardship. We share the blessing of worship. We share the blessing of leadership. We share the blessing of holiness through quality, justice, and peace. We serve God's people in the world. We serve people in our health ministries. We serve people in our socio-economic ministries. We serve people in our educational ministries. We serve people in our justice ministries. We serve people in our DRRM ministries. We serve people through environmental protection and ecological ministries. We serve people as God calls us to do His will in the world. Let us check our GCFA statistical form. Let us also develop an addendum to the official form that will express the statistical monitoring and the documentation needed to implement our programs and ministries. These programs and ministries will focus on sharing God's blessings in the church and serving God's people in the world. Ang unang adhikain natin sa ating Beya Strategic Plan ay magkaroon ng maayos na membership record at statistics upang ito'y maging matibay na basihan ng ating paglago sa pananampalataya na matutunghayan at mapapatunayan natin sa bunga ng ating mga programs and ministries. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit mahalaga sa atin ang multiplying membership. The categories of membership church council should be guided by paragraph 214 and paragraph 215 on the different categories of membership in the UMC. Uniting with the UMC as professing members, baptized members including associate and constituent members may eventually become professing members in accordance with 216 and paragraph 217. Growth in faithful discipleship and the call to ministry of all baptized, discipleship and call to ministry are important mandates for all members within the context of mutual responsibility. Paragraph 2018, paragraph 2019 and paragraph 2020. UMC members are also accountable to live according to disciplinary standards of faithfulness and discipline in paragraph 221. Admission into the church in paragraph 222 to 226 explains procedure on preparing church members to become professing members in the context of faithful discipleship and ministry. Care for members. Paragraph 228 talks about 
how the church ministries and ministers to members. The paragraph also emphasizes the need to exhaust all efforts to win back all members to the UMC who may have left or who had become inactive or non-accessible for quiet some time. For statistical and ministry purposes, these members who cease to be connected to their local UMC congregation should be in a separate list and the pastoral team of the church should be tasked to reach out to them until they decide to reaffirm their UMC membership vows. The pastoral approach is to create a welcoming church culture and atmosphere for these brothers and sisters that will encourage them to come back and actively reconnect with their UMC congregation. The list of professing members can be designated as professing members under paragraph 228. This task of pastoral team and other members of the UMC congregation precludes any premature action of the church conference to remove professing and baptized members. Only when it had been clearly communicated that these members do not want to continue as UMC members anymore and due process had been observed that a church conference action to remove them from the membership role is warranted. Mentoring Discipleship Ang pangalawang adhikain sa ating strategic plan ay ang pagpapayaman ng kaalaman at pagpapalalim ng pananampalataya ng ating mga kapatid bilang mga disciples na ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. Bilang maalagad ng ating Panginoon, pagdadaanan nila ang confirmation at membership classes or leaders training. Leaders means lay evangelist and disciple makers equipped for renewal and service. Mahalaga sa mga kabataan na maging bahagi din sila ng School for Christian Youth Development at maglaan ng budget ang mga local churches upang suportahan ang pag-aaral ng ating mga UMY efforts. Hindi rin dapat mapabayaan ang continuing training para sa mga lay servants at lay ministers, covenant discipleship groups, either with or without microfinance Ministries. Isang mahalagang pagsasanay na may kinalaman sa evangelism explosion ang patuloy na ginagampanan ng ating mga evangelist sa ating hanay. Ang SNACS, Evangelistic Crusade na nagbunga ng 1,295 faith baptisms noong 2019 ay pwede nating ipagpatuloy dahil maluwag na ang health protocols ng ating bansa. Sa lahat ng ito, Mahalaga na ating masusing itala ang mga performance records natin sa ating mga gawain. Isang mahalagang papel ang ginagampanan ng ating mga local church, district, and annual conference statisticians sa bagay na ito. Hinikayat ko ang mga pastor ay masigasig nilang sanayin ang kanilang mga local churches Hindi lamang sa pagpapatupad ng mentoring discipleship activities, kundi maging sa makautuhan ng pagtatala ng mga statistics tungkol dito. Mahalaga din na magkaroon ng comparative studies ng mga statistical records mula noong 2020 hanggang 2024. Huwag nating pilitin kung talagang wala namang nagawa or naipatupad. Ngunit para sa taong 2022, at hanggang sa masusunod pang taon, ipagpatuloy natin ang pagpapatupad sa mga ito. Pangatlong adhikain ng ating strategic plan ay nakapaloob sa mga programs and ministries na tinaguri ang mobilizing in stewardship. Tulad ng multiplying in membership at mentoring in discipleship, 
Mahalaga na magkaroon ng comparative study ang mga statistical data mula noong 2020 hanggang 2024. Binabati ko ang mga annual conferences na matagumpay nilang nagawa ang kanilang kumpletong statistical reporting mula pa noong 2013 na nagsimula tayo sa ating four areas of focus. Mobilizing in stewardship embraces many programs and ministries that encompass our many ways of becoming a church for our neighbors by serving in the world. Kasama na dito ang ating mga gawain pang manguna sa mga disaster relief and rehabilitation ministries, mutual hospitalization aid program, at pagsuporta sa first Monday Teleton na kinabibilangan ng Bea Revitalized Saranay Program para sa mga contributing members ng BERS na dinadala sa ospital o bahay pagamutan. Kasali na dito ang Mutual Debt Aid Program tulad ng Damayan ng James E. Network Credit Cooperative. Mahalaga din ang patuloy na pag-aaral tungkol sa katuruan ng Biblia na may kinalaman sa Christian stewardship kabilang na ang pagbibigay ng ikapo. Ang Lupao United Methodist Church ay ipinapatupad ang personal savings for titers and pledgers at ang kanyang PSTP savings ay ginawang automatic contribution nila sa kanyang James Covenant Discipleship Group dahil ang buong UMC congregation sa Lupao ay sinimulan upang maging isang malaking James Covenant Discipleship Group. Ipinagpapatuloy din natin ang ating livelihood training programs at tree planting programs. Sa panahon na delikado ang kalagayan ng mundo dahil sa climate change at global warming, hindi isang pansamantalang diversyon o di kaya'y paminsan-minsang opsyon lamang ang tree planting. Huwag po tayong titigil sa pagtatanim ng mga puno. Ilan lamang ang mga ito sa mga mahalagang programs and ministries na pwedeng ipatupad ng local church, district, at annual conference. Idagdag natin ang isa pang mahalagang aksyon ng Bishop's Office na bigyan ng tungkulin ang iyong lingkod bilang Bishop's Advisor on Property Development. Ito ay isang special focus ng iyong lingkod kasama ang kanyang tungkulin bilang administrative assistant na may kinalaman sa mga malasakit natin sa Northeast Philippines Annual Conference. Ipagpatuloy natin ang mga ito. Everything belongs to God. We are blessed to be stewards and managers of God's household. We give not out of constraint, but with commitment. Not out of gratification, but gratitude. Not out of fear, but fulfillment. Like I think stewardship should be seen as a disciplined commitment of faith. Everything is done in obedience and surrender to God's sovereignty in our lives. Mahalaga din ang pang-apat na adhikain ng Bea Strategic Plan, Magnifying God in Worship. Dito natin pagtutuunan ang pansin kung gaano kahusay ang ating mga membership, discipleship, stewardship at leadership ministries dahil nabibilang at nagtitimbang ang mga fruits at results 
sa pamamagitan ng statistics on average worship attendance mula noong 2020 hanggang umabot sa 2024. Isang napakahalagang bahagi na pagsamba sa ating liturgical tradition bilang mga United Methodists ay binabahagi ng ating mga kapatid sa Order of St. Luke isa sa mga mentor at advisor ng Bishop's Office ang ating kapatid na DS Reverend Joel Bengbeng upang lalong pagyamanin ang ating sacramental scholarship at liturgical practice. Nawa ay masigasig nating pagtibayin ang ating pagsamba na ginagamit ang ating tradisyong liturhiya lalong-lalo na sa ating regular Sunday services. Bahagi ng mayamang worship experience ng mga simbahang metodista sa 21st century ang maraming iba't ibang kapahayagan ng pagsamba at pananampalataya. Ang ating mga UMYF at UMAYA First ang nangunguna sa iba't ibang worship styles at expressions. Let us encourage our young people to creatively express their faith and ministries through their unique and contextual worship engagement. They should be supported and their theological responses to the call of the times by their worship experience or experiences that are both conservative of our Methodist heritage and creative of our Christian engagements to our contemporary spiritual Journey. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ang topic po na aking isi-share sa inyo sa sandaling ito ay patungkol po sa contemporary worship. Lagi po nating binabanggit ang salitang contemporary worship. Ngunit sa maraming churches, ito ay nagdadala ng kalituhan. Isang mainit na issue kung ano ba talaga ang contemporary worship. Sa ilan, ang contemporary worship ay ang paggamit ng contemporary music. Hindi na piano, kundi keyboard. Gitara at uh, drums na ang gamit. Wala na ang himno, praise songs na ang in. Sa iba, ang contemporary worship ay ang paggamit ng modern technology gaya ng PowerPoint presentations, and videos. Wala ng Bible at hymnals. Yung video screen na ang in. Sa ibang banda, imbis na sa sanctuary ay sa worship centers na ginaganap. Imbis na altar ay stage na. May opening prayer naman, pero wala ng invocations. Imbis na sermon ay pananalita na lamang. Sa iba, ang contemporary worship ay pag-iwas sa mga ginagawa sa traditional worship, gaya ng pagkanta ng mga himno, invocations, confessions, and passing the peace of Christ. Kung bagay, eh, gawin mo ang gusto mong gawin. Walang liturgy o standard. Basta gawin mo o sundan mo na lang ang ginagawa at sinasabi ng worship leader. Iba-iba ang pagkaunawa ng mga churches at members tungkol sa contemporary worship. Kaya ang malaking katanungan ay ano nga ba ang contemporary worship? Ang synonyms o kasing kahulugan ng contemporary ay modern, up-to-date, current, at latest. At ayon naman sa Random House College Dictionary, ang word na contemporary ay existing occurring, living at the same time, and belong the same period. Kaya, mga kapatid, ang ibig sabihin ng contemporary worship ay pagsamba na nararapat at makahulugan sa mga taong namumuhay sa kasalukuyang panahon at hindi sa nakalipas. Kaya, sa bawat henerasyon at kultura at ang pagbabago ng mga ito, ay nandyan lagi ang issue o katanungan patungkol sa contemporary worship. 
bilang panghuli mga kapatid, traditional man or contemporary ang ginagawa nating pagsamba, parehas din ang ating hangarin to give glory, honor, and praise to our Heavenly Father. Ito ay ang pagsasapamuhay ng mga salita ng Diyos at ng Kanyang pagtawag sa ating mga buhay. Ito ay pagbibigay ng paggalang at pagpapahalaga sa ating Diyos na karapat dapat purihin at sambahin ng lahat ng nilikha. Tandaan natin mga kapatid, ang pagsamba ay hindi nagbabago. Worship does not change. Maraming salamat po at purihin at pasalamatan natin ang Diyos. Amen. Honoring and praising God is the ultimate goal of Beya UMC congregations. This is done most especially in congregational gatherings of worship. Since worship is dedicated to the glory of God, then it must be done with heartfelt seriousness and disciplined devotion. To mandate mission focus in leadership is to encompass mission within the framework of changing landscape in the 21st century. Such mandate had already been covered in the call, encompassing gospel witness and grace, field ministries in our goals to multiply in membership, mentor in discipleship, mobilize in stewardship, magnify God in worship, and model ministries of holiness through equality, peace, and justice. It is important to train and equip our UMC congregations in social media ministries, picture and photo collage editing, video editing, content writing and copywriting, as well as editing, music video editing, liturgical and sacramental traditions, praise and worship, evangelism explosion, UMC sexual ethics, Christian counseling, and financial management system in the local church. It is also important to train our church council officers regarding their duties. Our one missionary strategy that had been previously identified is the approach used by evangelism explosion. DS Excelsis Biteng and DS Reverend Dr. Vicky Baybay Damilig had been specifically trained for this purpose. Our mandate in mission leadership compels us to equip ourselves with ministry skills that our changing mission landscapes demands from us. However, we also take leadership in church to oppose the dehumanization discrimination and deprivation of those less privileged among us. In so doing, the church truly becomes our church for our neighbors. When we model ministries of holiness through equality, peace, and justice, we must make sure that our church, the sanctuary for our neighbors, is truly a sacred space and safe sanctuary for vulnerable, victimized and violated women and men, youth and children, including those who identify themselves as belonging to the LGBT community. Our church must also be a sanctuary that is accessible and available for persons living with HIV, AIDS, PWHA. Kailangan din tayong makibahagi sa mga gawain at adhikain ng ating mga government institutions, interfaith movements, at ecumenical associations sa mga panlipunang paglilingkod. Ang lahat ng ito ay nagpapatupad ng ating strategic plan na ang ating simbahan ay totoong kapatiran kung saan tayo ay gumaganap ng sharing in the church as serving in the world. Katulad ng uh, pakikibahagi ni Bishop Pete sa Underground Ministry Organization na tinatawag na UGMO sa pangunguna ng Barangay Council ng Bugnay, Candon, Ilocos Sur at ng Bugnay United Methodist Church. Ito ay gawaing naglilingkod sa mga dating NPA members at ilang mga illegal drug users na nagbabalik loob at gustong maging bahagi 
ng kagalingan at pagbabago sa kontekstong spiritual na pinangungunahan ng simbahan. Napakayama ng chaplaincy service or paglilingkod bilang isang pastor sa mga NGOs at LGUs. Ating tunghayan ang mga services ng Lakasandili Medical Clinic sa pangunguna ni Dr. Karin Alna Lakasandili. Ganun din ang mga chaplaincy services ni Nadia's Reverend Dr. Vicky Baybay Damilig. Chaplain Sea Service, my dear friends, is called Kasimbayanan. It is the Ilocos Police Regional Office or the PRO1 program for the community. PRO1 has partnered with religious leaders and barangay officials for its cleansing measures through the program Kasimbayanan. Kapulisan, Simbahan, and Pamayanan ng Diyos tungo sa kaunlaran. This is a 48-week learning program. It is a program of joint effort from the police, the church, and the community, which aims to promote camaraderie towards a progressive and peaceful community. The internal cleansing of the PNP has three aspects, and these are the punitive, the restorative, and the preventive. Kasimbayanan falls on the preventive category. Through this program, the PNP squad meets weekly through interactive meeting or what we call SWIM. Police personnel have their own squads in their respective stations which is composed of 5 to 8 and a maximum of 10 persons. The barangay officials would also have their own squads in their respective barangays. And the leader of the squad is usually the barangay captain and he is being assisted by the police and the pastors which is called life coaches or the barangay chaplains. Friends, this is Kasimbayanan, the PRO1 program from the police to the church and to the community. Thank you. While being firm in our biblical convictions on human sexuality and marriage, it also remains the teaching of Scripture that we do not have the prerogative to judge the way God will judge. Our church is therefore an open door to all persons who identify themselves other than male and female and yet believe that God called them into our fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We therefore treasure the gifts, prayers, presence, service and witness of our brothers and sisters who identify themselves as LGBT+. Brothers and sisters in the Baguio Episcopal area, I hope our Bea team has capably introduced to you a simple orientation and introduction needed in your leadership and ministry roles as you implement the conceptual and statistical framework of the BEA strategic plan. After finishing the BEA strategic plan's statistical form, 
then you can fill up the GCFA statistical form so that all the related data in the GCFA statistical form is filled up according to our data in the BEA statistical form. It is very important that we heed the advice of Bishop Pitt for continuing and constant meeting and reporting at least once a month for the Church Council in order to make sure that our UMC congregations are always alert and awake and enthusiastic in implementing our BEA flagship ministries. Let us continue to move forward in the spirit of the UMC Book of Discipline and the results of the 2019 called session of the General Conference, especially in matters related to human sexuality, marriage, and ordination. The Church is facing a lot of divisive issues related to these important concerns. However, let us be guided by the pastoral statement of the Philippine Central Conference College of Bishops regarding this matter. As United Methodists in the Philippines, let us stand united behind this pastoral statement of the College of Bishops. There will be a lot of difficulties and challenges ahead of us. The New Testament Church is not a stranger to all of this. However, let us move forward with the courageous faith of the New Testament Church as it speaks to us today through one of its apostolic leaders, the Apostle Paul. He said in 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 10, But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crass. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. Therefore, in the words of Jude in verse 3, I appeal to all of you, dear friends, I wanted very much to write to you concerning the salvation we share. Instead, I must write to urge you to fight for the faith delivered once and for all to God's holy people. In conclusion, Jude 20, 21 tell us, But you, dear friends, build its other up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep its other in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will give you eternal life. To God be the glory. Amen and Amen.